Getting close to getting the CNC plasma cutter done, uh, but I've been working on it for the last few months and I'm kind of getting anxious about not working on the Cobra. It's actually been over a year since I worked on it. So I'm thinking it's definitely overdue that I've done any work and uh, I think I'm gonna start building the frame. Um, I did have the frame kind of designed in my head and designed a little bit on paper, uh, but I've mostly forgot what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna have to refresh my memory on uh, the design of the frame. Uh, we'll take a look at my notes and then once I kind of got that figured out, we'll go ahead and start building the frame. Uh, luckily I'm working from home right now, so I might have a little bit uh, extra time to work on the frame. Uh, so hopefully we can knock this out in the next couple months. Uh, really excited. Let's go and do it. Boxing this out. This will be the floor. It extends out to the front of the car. First mistake, this cut here. Obviously that's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to remember if I do angles, I have to split the angle in, um, in half in order for the sizes to match up. So I kind of forgot about doing that. Um, the reason I'm having this come in here, I'm giving around four inches of space, is I want to allow room for the exhaust uh, so, you know, on typical Cobra, you have your exhaust, it comes down from the headers, so like this, then it wraps around the car, and then it goes along the car, and then it exits somewhere around here. Well, I am going to do that, but I also want to run uh, some exhaust to the back where mufflers will be, and I'll have a valve, or a butterfly valve, that will uh, either allow you to go to the mufflers or just go right out the side. Now, the reason for that is Cobras are super loud, which is, you know, cool, but there's certain times where you don't want your Cobra to be that loud. Basically, the idea is I can flip that valve whenever I want. Let's say it's in the morning, I don't want to wake people up or something like that. Flip the valve and it'll be a lot less quieter because you got the exhaust in the back. There's an easy fix to this. I don't know why I didn't think about it earlier. Just put that there. We're good to go weld it on the other side uh it took too long for me to figure that out i think it's getting too late we'll call it a night and we'll pick this up tomorrow so i just got back from the junkyard back there is a uh, differential and a spindle uh, from an old thunderbird that's what i'll be using uh, on the cobra i have some half shafts that i got on amazon like two years ago uh they were only like twenty dollars each or like twenty two dollars each uh, and they're designed for uh, a Thunderbird rear end um, and Cobra lengths. So the, the width of the Cobra, they're designed for that. They're specially made. Only $22, so I had to, had to buy, actually bought four of them. So like $80, $80 90 total, uh, just in case I break, uh, you know, a couple. Uh, but yeah, I needed some... Uh, I needed to visualize what the differential would look like uh, as I'm building the frame. I, I was having a hard time figuring out where everything was gonna go. Uh, so that's why I bought these. I was gonna buy them anyways, but now I can actually kind of visualize where everything is gonna go. All right, we got this here. Let's check out this. So, um, forgot to mention, these were a little under $200 for the two, of the, for the two parts. All right, so this is the axle. All right, let's, <laughs> I'm a little nervous because I'm not sure if it'll actually fit. It should, but, so this should go in there. And this should go in the axle, I think. We'll find out. Actually, never uh, put an, an axle together. Yeah, so that it looks like it fits. Okay. 
Okay. It's not on there. That's it. So that works. Uh, I think there's a retaining ring I gotta take out. I actually have no idea how you undo that. I assume you have to take the whole thing apart. I don't know, I'll have to read up on how to insert these. But yeah, this is, uh, this is working. Just notice this, it's a 7.5. I wanted an 8.8. .8. I just called the junkyard. I'm gonna go back, swap this out. Okay, quick trip, and I'm back with the 8.8. Uh, uh, so this is a step up from the 7.5. The 7.5 uh, would have worked, but it probably wouldn't be able to handle the horsepower that this engine has, so we have 300 horsepower there. And that's, re that's kind of on the upper limit of the 7.5. Uh, so definitely wanted to get the 8.8 .8 that will allow me to do a, you know future performance mods. And also when you're running on the track, you really want something that can uh, really handle that power. Uh, we got it all lined up. It's uh, perfectly in line uh, with the transmission. So I plan on doing just a straight drive shaft, no U joints, just direct. Um, so it's right now it's set up where it can do that. Both of these are gonna be rigidly mounted to the frame. Uh, so a solid drive shaft, especially considering how short this is, shouldn't be that big of an issue. Obviously it's an independent rear suspension. Wanted to do that because I think it's gonna be a little bit better for the track. Uh, right now the half shaft height is right in the middle of where the wheel will be uh, so that's your most efficient height uh, so everything's lined up i can continue uh, to build the frame and uh, this will be good to to work around it one thing i forgot to add and this is kind of a weird th the, the 75 wasn't like this but this one if you notice and maybe it's kind of hard to see on the camera but this is a little bit shorter than this so it's at the, the joint right here is actually a little bit farther out versus here. I don't know how I'm going to account for that because I'm pretty sure the, the half shafts I have are the same length. Most likely the way I'm going to have to handle that is either uh, maybe some wheel spacers or I don't know. That's the only idea I really have right now is some wheel spacers. Uh, but we'll have to think about that and, and account for it. Okay, so I was talking about the, uh, the sizes being different on either side. That got me thinking, how does the, the axle change, um, you know, length as the suspension moves up and down? Because there will be a little bit of uh, change there. And what I'm noticing is this moves up and down. So I didn't know that's how CV axles worked. But you can see there's a good maybe two inches of travel. So I think that's how we're going to overcome the issue with the uh, the sizes not being equal. And maybe that's that was obvious to others, but it wasn't obvious to me. So uh, now I'm not too worried about uh, this fitting on the axle. Making progress, first screw up. Did this measurement, it's supposed to be on this side instead of this side. That's why we're tacking. We'll grind that off and uh, reposition. Here's the floor of the Cobra, pretty much almost done. I need to put that, that piece I actually cut too short. I'm actually out of steel. I uh, used some of the steel for some other projects. I have some uh, at my dad's garage, so I'll probably get that tomorrow. But anyways, so this is the, uh, the floor of the Cobra. Uh, everything's square right now. So I said in an earlier video, what I plan on doing is welding a floor on here 
and that should add rigidity uh, to these square sections. So usually you would have diagonal uh, braces, but because I'll be putting some sheet metal as a floor in there, I'm hoping that will uh, deal with the rigidity. Uh, so the idea of this floor is you'll be able to drop the powertrain components uh, down out of it. So if I ever have to work on the engine or maybe I even have to swap the engine or something like that, uh, I won't need to uh, basically cut up the frame in order to get the engine out. It's all designed so that you can just take the engine down. Also in the back, if you have to take the, the differential, you can put that down. Uh, I was looking at the suspension, uh, the spindle, which I actually got over here. At the height of the axle, uh, we're not gonna have any kind of clearance issues with the lower control arm uh, and the floor, uh, which is good. I was kind of hoping that would be the case. Um, that will allow for, like I was saying before, better uh, aerodynamics uh, because you have a flat floor on this whole thing. Um, and there will actually be flat parts here as well. So there will be sheet metal uh, in these areas that will be removable. And uh, so this whole floor will be just a flat uh, plane uh, under the car. And that should really help with downforce and aerodynamics. We got some more steel. I just cut up another length and it doesn't fit again. So, you see it's still a little too short. Um, how I've been measuring this is I've just been measuring from this side and that's how long that side is. But when I look at it, this diagonal right here compared to this diagonal, they do not meet up at the same place. So that's why <laughs> I screwed up twice. It's not gonna be a symmetrical frame, but what are you gonna do? We're going uh, vertical in the frame now and we have to connect the floor uh, to the uh, tubing, the round tubing up above. Uh, so, how it's gonna work is the floor is actually uh, gonna be narrower than where the round tubing is. And the reason for that is the Cobra body, it comes in, uh, so on the side and then on the bottom, it actually comes in. Uh, so the floor had to be narrower uh, than where the round tubing will be. And we want the round tubing as close to the body as possible, uh, just so we have more interior room uh, you know, in the cockpit. And here, we're gonna make some pieces out of the square tubing. I've been measuring the angles and everything. And then there will be these supports that will weld here, here, and here. Uh, so they'll come, they'll, they'll come up and then out, and then the round tubing will be here. And um, that's how it's gonna work. Okay, here are our six uh, supports. Uh, they're all welded up. I kind of used uh, this round tubing and the square tubing to make kind of a jig so that they're all the same. Uh, but basically how these will look, so we'll go over to the frame. We'll just put these on there. Man, I'm just now noticing, and I can't believe I didn't notice this before, but so these were my measurements, uh, 54 inches wide is where the uh, round tubing has to be, and then the the floor was 48 inches, so the total is, oh, six inches, but no, it's, that's, it has to be divided by two. So all of these are off <laughs> by a lot. They're twice as wide as they should be, which is kind of annoying because I spent a lot of time on this, but I guess the, the easy fix is we can just drill these, put these back on this crappy Harbor Freight uh, thing. Thinking even more about it, I don't even think I can do that because then this won't be tall enough. It won't clear the body. Oh, I'm gonna have to start all over again. Oh, feeling kind of defeated. Been thinking about this for a while, still trying to salvage this. Uh, as you can probably tell, I really don't want to redo all of this work. Uh, but at this point, I don't think it's gonna work. 
Um, one of the ideas I had was, okay, maybe I could just space this back because uh, it's only off by an inch and a half, at least the width. But then I put it on the square and even the, the height is off by an inch as well. I definitely spent a few hours doing this, which sucks, but it's a good lesson. Don't only rely on, you know, uh, some drawings that you did or some simple math that you did uh, on a piece of paper. It's also good to, you know, lay out what you plan on doing on something like this, like a square where you can actually get real measurements. The new design is we're just going to do a straight shot from the round tubing. This ruler is kind of simulating the square tubing. So a straight shot from the round tubing uh, to the floor. It, the good thing is uh, I think it's going to be an improvement and it's going to be pretty easy to fabricate considering it or, uh, compared to this, which was a huge pain in the butt. There's our six supports. We'll go weld them on the frame. I got this tube where it'll be uh, once it's welded to the frame. I don't actually like how far in it goes there. So I think I'm going to bring it a little bit further this way. I actually wanted to hit that seam. That'll make it easy for me to seal this off. I'll recut these. Uh, luckily it's an easy cut. I'll just cut off a little piece and then we'll bring it right up to the edge of this. Got the supports welded on here. Uh, got a tube rusted on these just to kind of show what it'll look like. But this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna have uh, these round tubes go from the front to the back. Uh, only the bottom tube I'm gonna have go from the very back to the front. So there will actually be two bends, a bend here and a bend towards the front. And that's to angle it towards the middle of the car. Uh, so there's gonna be a continuous length and those are gonna be kind of difficult to make. And it, actually, I only have two tubes that are long enough to go that far. So you can see there's the tubes. Only one of them is actually long enough. And then on the other side of the garage, I have another one that's long enough. So I'm not actually going to bend those first. I'm going to bend another tube uh, just to figure out how the tube bender works. So here's the tube bender from you know an earlier video. I got to dig it out of there. This thing, you have to worry about spring back. So as you bend a tube, the angle that you actually see on the bender is not where it's going to end up because once you release the tension, the, the tube will bend back. And so I have to figure out what that's going to be on here. So when I bend, I have to figure out how much it springs back. And I also have to figure out like where I need to clamp the tube in order to position the bend and things like that. So I don't want to do that on those long tubes because I only have two of them. And if I screw up, I'm out of luck. Uh, the, the tubes that will be above uh, on the secondary level, like a foot taller, those will not go the continuous length of the frame. I'm actually going to have those end. There'll be a, a front loop in the, uh, the front of the vehicle here. So those will end at that front loop. Uh, so those don't have to be as long. And if I screw it up, it's not the end of the world because I have a bunch of tubes over there. This is the tube notcher from Harbor Freight. How do you even cut more than like a 15 degree angle? There's no clearance. Like I can't twist this more. This is already all the way up to the top. The bolts are already all the way there. This is, this does, this makes no sense to me. Back in the garage after a two week break, uh, the past couple weeks I've been designing the suspension for this car. Uh, I didn't have any idea what the suspension was gonna look like uh, until I started designing it. Um, and it took me a long time to figure out the right way to actually design suspension. It's extremely difficult and uh, you, there's a lot of things you have to study in order to figure out how to do it. So I still actually have a lot to do there but what I've done is I've at least figured out what the upper and lower control arms will look like uh, for both the front and the rear. And what that allows me to do is now build the frame uh, and make sure that all the tubing goes to locations that will meet the upper and lower control arms. This tube is just uh, something to mock up where a steel tube will reside. So I got this wire here that allows me to bend it and push it in different uh, directions. And then I got these pieces of wood, this one, and then this one right here. These represent the heights of the upper and lower control arms. So that one right there is the lower, and then this one is the, is the upper. 
based on those heights and the locations that I've kind of mapped out on the platform here, I can figure out the points that the suspension will mount to. And this tube is actually going to have a lot of mounts to it. This is kind of everything is going to meet at this point. In order to figure out the angles I need to bend, I printed out a protractor and then kind of mounted it on this piece of wood. And then I got this another piece of uh, like welding wire. Um, and as I bend, that welding wire will go this way. And then we'll figure out what angles uh, the bend is as I'm bending it. Okay, so I went a little bit further than 123. I don't think it actually engaged until I got a couple degrees in. Also, it'll probably spring back. Uh, so right now we're going to uh, release the tension uh, on the uh, actuator and we'll see how much it springs back. So right now, the top of this is like 124, let's say. So we'll now release the pressure. Wow, that's quite a bit. About four and a half degrees. So this is a tube on there. This is not going to be the one that goes on the bottom, but rather the one that goes on the top. Uh, I did actually screw up the angle here. I don't know, when we get it all laid up, we'll see if that angle um, is too uh, too steep or not. I don't know, we'll figure it out later. Uh, if it's not, it's not that big of a deal. I can just bend another tube. But anyways, this gives us a good idea of what the bottom tube is gonna look like. Uh, you can see this angle, and we're gonna actually wanna kick it in a little bit this way uh, so that it'll meet up with there. I've made the measurements on how long this uh, section needs to be. There we go, we got one bend done. I got a bend in the front as well. So I gotta cut, I gotta notch this out and then we'll, we'll butt it up uh, to that tube. But just to kind of show how much clearance we have with the back wheel, you know, about a, about an inch. I went to fit this and I screwed up this bend right here. I, I measured the starting point wrong. Instead of starting from here, I started from here, and then the bend got shifted back way too far. So now, uh, if I were to drop the engine, it would hit this bar. That's not good. Yeah, it's, this is a lot harder than I thought it'd be, uh, building this frame. I mean, obviously this is the first time I've done something like this, and there's a lot of mental arithmetic you have to do while you're doing it, and I've been making a lot of mistakes. Um, I don't know, really frustrated right now. And I sat down and thought, you know, what am I gonna do? And basically, I mean, I just gotta, I gotta power through this. Uh, it's been really slow progress and I just gotta, I just gotta keep going. So that's what I'm gonna do. Back to where we were this morning. Uh, let's do it again. Got it done. I'm still really close. In fact, it still, the engine still overhangs the tube by just a little bit, but it's a lot better than it used to be. Um, I think I overbent it actually. I, was, I wasn't paying attention and I was off by a degree. I think that might've made the difference. Uh, what I'll do is just on the other side, make sure there's just a little bit more clearance so it shouldn't be an issue. Plus this engine can move back just slightly as well when you're dropping it. Uh, so there shouldn't be an issue getting it out of the body. It'll be very close, but I think it's gonna work. Okay, what I'm trying to figure out right now is the front roll hoop. This is what's gonna be uh, beneath the windshield. Um, the, the Cobra body has a curvature. So this is what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna do four bends, so one, two, three, four. Uh, the simple way to do it would just be two bends, so you do a 90 and then another 90. Uh, but because I want to get that as close to the body as possible, I'm going to do four bends 
and I was trying to figure out what the angles would be and where I should start the bends and whatnot uh, on a piece of paper, and it just wasn't really working. So instead, what I've done is I've mocked up these tubes here, and this will be one side, so it's going to go up, bend, go up on an angle, and then bend again, and then go across. So what I have here will allow me to figure out what the, this angle is, what that angle is, and then what the distances are between these bends. So I'll take these measurements down, take it to the tube bender, and then hopefully I can you know, get this done in one try. My first attempt, one thing, the, both angles were two degrees bigger than they should have been. So that's an issue, and then I completely screwed up the length of that. Okay, so first attempt, not good. We'll do it again. At least I, I feel like I made the two mistakes I could have made on the first one. So next time, hopefully that won't happen. Front hoop is done. Uh, I need to obviously notch either side, but yeah, it looks good. I mean, obviously it's a little offset here, but we'll fix that. Second try, couldn't get it on the first one, but I'm really uh, stoked. I think that's, that's going to work out well. When I measured the width uh, of this hoop, I was measuring when uh, one length was a lot longer than the other, and then that screwed up my measurement. So it was actually uh, half an inch narrow. Uh, so I put this 2x4 in there, and I wedged it in there, and now uh, it's spread it out so that it's uh, the correct width. Uh, so what I'll do is finish notching either of these sides, uh, then I'll tack it in, and then I can remove the 2x4, and we'll be good. Back from the store, and $45 later, and we got a new uh, tube uh, that's long enough uh, to do the full bend. A uh, good thing is I have this kind of template now uh, to kind of help me uh, do it correctly. And uh, we'll be able to cut up this, this old one, so it's not going to go to waste. We'll, we'll use it for other parts on the frame and maybe other, other projects in the future. Okay, I got those uh, tubes tacked in, so both sides are now good to go. And we got the front roll bar also tacked in. We got enough space to drop the engine now. Got like an inch leeway there, so I uh, shouldn't have any clearance issues. And yeah, that's uh, the frame coming along. Okay, we got we got the side of the frame done. I uh, got all the diagonal pieces in here. They're all notched up. I have yet to tack it. Uh, the reason being is I want to copy this over there, and it'll be easier for me to uh, copy these pieces one by one, even the notches and everything. So there's a lot of work to put all those notches, especially in these. You know, when I have a curve here or a curve over here, it's it's quite difficult to notch uh, each one of those pieces is kind of just uh, put it in there see where i need to grind off more metal and grind off more metal and i think each piece takes probably uh, 20 times of just putting it there grinding it putting it there grinding it uh, so if i can copy that that's going to make it a lot easier uh, but yeah i think this is going to be good this square section doesn't have a diagonal i think it'll still be pretty strong but in order to fit the wheel i didn't i couldn't put any uh, support there you can kind of see this uh, represents the wheel. I move this over there, this piece of wood, and you can see how it kind of uh, encroaches in on the, the side of the frame. Um, got some tires. These are used. Uh, after uh, looking at the budget, I got an Excel sheet and kind of planning out all the things I need to purchase. Uh, I was looking like I was going to go over budget, so I'm looking for places here and there where I can use either used parts or find, or find cheaper alternatives. Uh, so Every time I find something like these tires, I bought them, got them pretty cheap. I think like $160 shipped. So uh, we're making progress.
All right, we got this frame pretty much done, uh, the outside at least. Uh, this is all tacked up and it's uh, it's real sturdy, so definitely really good. Uh, now I'm going to work on the transmission tunnel. I was debating whether or not to use round tubing or the square tubing I've been using. And since I'm getting pretty short on both of them, and uh, that's pretty expensive, the round tubing, I think I'm going to just go with the square tubing. Uh, so we'll do that for the transmission tunnel. And then I'm going to do some work on uh, the corners here. I'm going to make some mounting points for uh, basically the subframe for the engine. There will be a subframe that I'm going to make later, uh, but I need to make some allocations for where I'm going to mount that subframe. Whoopsies. Made these brackets here, it's gonna go in like that. And then there's gonna be round tubing that goes up uh, to this bar. Uh, so these are gonna be welded in there and then there's a hole there uh, for a bolt to go through to bolt the subframe to. All right, we got those vertical supports in. Uh, I got the mounts there for the subframe. And I was gonna do the transmission tunnel, but after playing around with the seat, it's going to be real tight. I'm a little concerned about uh, how tight the seat is going to be to the transmission tunnel and then to the body. Uh, so the next step is to actually get the body on top of this frame. Um, I'm going to save that for another video. Uh, it's actually not here right now, so I have to trailer it over to my house. Uh, but anyways, it's been two and a half months of working on the frame. i uh, really excited about all the progress that I've made. You know, two and a half months ago, there was some hazy ideas of what this was going to look like and after you know start, starting to bend and weld these tubes together I'm finally at a place where wow this is actually starting to look like a car and um, it's really exciting. When I was at the beginning stages of this project it didn't really feel real but now, now that I got this all uh, welded together I think this is a big step and it's starting to feel like a real project. I'm definitely getting more and more um, involved in it and putting a lot more effort into it. So I'm uh, really excited about the next uh, steps of this project. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to end it there, and uh, thanks for watching.